Hello, and welcome to another episode of Keep Wondering, where I cover anything on science and technology. From this video, to your favorite apps, and your family's WhatsApp group, these hidden network of undersea cables carries 99% of all internet's data. Although many of us use wireless devices on a regular basis, the network of underwater submarine cables that enable international connections of servers and connect continents and islands to the World Wide Web is the most crucial component of the internet. This raises larger questions like, how many of these cables are in existence? And how dependent is the internet on this underwater infrastructure? As of 2021, internet traffic is routed through a network of over 420 underwater cables with a total length of 1.3 million kilometers. This is equivalent of wrapping a single cable over 28 times around the Earth's equator. The fundamental infrastructure for the internet's high bandwidth highways is provided by this huge network of cables. These connections employ optical fiber to transmit data at 35 terabits per second on average. Some of the newer cables, such as the Marea cable that connects the US and Spain, can transmit data at 160 terabits per second. This is the equivalent of streaming 71 million HD videos at the same time. This cable is owned by Microsoft and Facebook. Submarine cables are often thick, with most measuring 3 to 4 inches in diameter, while the actual wire through which internet runs is typically no thicker than a human hair. This is because much of the cable's purpose is strictly for protection. To be deployed underwater, these cables must meet strict electrical standards. To traverse the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, cables must be capable of handling the extreme pressures that these environments require. Additionally, the cables must account for rocky seabeds, marine animals, tsunamis, volcanoes, and even the occasional shark. The optical fiber, via which data is delivered, is the first component of the cable. After that, petroleum jelly is applied to the fibers. The next layer is a copper tubing, which is used to not only provide the next layer protection but is also used to power the cable. To avoid data loss, the signal inside the optical fibers must be amplified every 70 to 100 kilometers. This is accomplished by the use of special boosters. The first step in laying the cable is to conduct a detailed study of the seabed to plan the cable's route. A ship pulls the cable from one country to another. Near the shore cable is laid by sea plows which digs a little trench for the cables to fall into. Eventually, natural ocean currents bury the cable. However, if the ground is uneven, the cable is unburied and vulnerable to ship anchors and other natural disasters. In 2008, one such disruption happened due to cable damage. About 60% of India and 70% of Egypt's internet services were briefly cut. With this being said, damaged cables are not uncommon. Repairs are constantly carried around the world. But really it is interesting to think, how physically vulnerable the internet is. Of course, there are so many other routes for traffic to take that it's nearly impossible to kill the internet by just cutting off one cable. Especially in more recent times, since satellites now circle the Earth beaming down the internet from the skies. What do you think of internet's infrastructure will look like in the coming decades? Leave your thoughts in the comment section, and if you enjoy these types of video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching Keep Wondering, and I'll see you soon for the next video.